The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the June 19th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. How about we have an extraordinary one? Yep, let's have an extraordinary day. And the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right, when you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is gonna toss at us. Now today, you and I, we're gonna go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're gonna go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but more important than that, during this next hour, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. That's right, right now, phone lines are open, 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, we've got you covered. Let those fingers do the walking. Yep, send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside that subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, in our Tiger's Den, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Less Show. Right now, flat markets ahead of the a Fed announcement and don't expect that anything will really change until two-ish, 2.30-ish, three-ish. Uh, we'll have to see what their first reaction, second reaction is. Uh, but at this stage, you've got flat markets. The Dow's out 12 points, no big deal. The S&P is off uh, less than one point. The Nasdaq down 10. The Russell off one. Uh, the semis off about two points. New York Stock Exchange up eight. As far as signals, uh, some leading type of signal to let us know how the market's going to respond, um, there just aren't any that I can identify. But what we can do is say, well, what are the conditions of the markets? What is it that would uh, let us know at day's end um, what those uh, conditions uh, would mean, depending on the type of candle that would form? And so we'll take a look at that. So the very first thing I would say, the, the easy tell today probably comes from the spot volatility index. Of course, I said probably because I can't be 100% certain. But if we do take a look at the spot volatility, index, first you're looking at, and when you look at this page here, you're looking at all the forward futures contracts, June through January of 2020. That's at the kind of the center, well, it's at the top panel, but uh, towards the bottom. You've got the spot volatility next. you got its three-month counterpart, six-month counterpart, one-year counterpart. Everything's nice and aligned out here as it should be. Uh, and the spot volatility index as of 109 is trading below its 50-day exponential moving average. Now, that number right now, 1583. It's going to change by a couple of pennies or so as the spot VIX moves up or down. But if price closes over the 50-day, Right now, we'll use the, the level of 1583. So 1584 is not exactly, yeah, that might be a close above it. But, uh, you know, that's no conviction. But if price were to close above that, well, then the signal would be or should be that we're going to see some type of top or it's either some type of top or retracement one or the other out there. Either way, above the 50-day exponential moving average, it could be a fairly significant retracement. You would ask the question, where would price likely retrace to? Well, here I would look at the ES, uh, the ES mini contract. And in this case, and now that's the left-hand panel. Let me just expand it so you can see it. You're going to see daily and weekly profiles out here. The blue ones are the daily. Let me move the data box over in the right-hand side. The uh, green ones are the weekly. I'd really take a look at the daily. Uh, or what I would say is the range for a pullback to hold with nothing really wrong would be 2849 
maybe to as high as 2862. In other words, the ES Mini needs to close below 2849 to say that there is a trouble in River City. Now, at that stage, you're trading at 2921 right now, so that's quite a move to the uh, downside. But that is where support is, or at least one level of support inside the ES Mini. The second level of support is going to be Stevie's Green Line. Uh, that is at 2881. So now we got 2881. We got 28.62 at the bottom of the weekly, 28.49. So the first number to be watching, obviously, 28.21 out there. You'll see that at the 29.38 level, that is a resistance zone. If, so we got to take a look at both sides of the trade, especially when there's no tell out here. If, on the other hand, uh, the ES Mini closes over 29.38. It'll make a run for its all-time highs. That was in May. Let me pull over the S&P uh, cash contract out here. Let me, or the index, let me uh, pull that over. Give me a moment just to change uh, worksheets around. And so inside of the S&P, the number you're watching is going to be 29.37.32. I might as well write that in here. 29.37.32. If price closes above that, so what that number represents, there's a green solid line if you're watching this on Tiger TV uh, that is on the chart. That uh, was from the looks like the trading day of May the uh, 6th. That began uh, what we refer to as a uh, Tommy DeMarc setup nine count. Nine consecutive closes where the close was lower than the close four bars earlier. It's a mouthful, but it's, uh, it's a worthwhile mouthful. Mouthful. And what it does is it sets up, in essence, it is really where the breakdown began. If you think about running a race, maybe, or, or you're just exercising before you really get into whatever that uh, major exercise is, you're warming up a bit. But then after that warm up, then you're you're into it. Well, in the case of the S&P 500, we didn't know it at the time, but it was into it from that point forward. And it's, it's, it takes a ton of energy. And so we refer to these, or I refer to these, as breakdown and breakout levels. Levels. It's natural for price to pull back to a breakout level. That would be uh, way down here, by the way, for the S&P 500, just so you know where that breakout level was. That was from the trading day of uh, June the 4th, and that's at 2762. Uh, uh, that would be game if price closed below Stevie's green line to 2868. Uh, but if price closed over 2937.32 today, you can anticipate that the S&P 500 is going to go test or make a new all-time high. Uh, and if the spot volatility closes below its 50-day exponential moving average today, that is a more likely outcome when we take a look at the S&P 500. Uh, let's continue doing this out here. Let's take a look at the uh, Dow. If we take a look at the Dow, the Dow's got the same breakdown or a breakdown, but that happens to be at its uh, high out here in May. And that level is uh, 26, 689, 39, 29, I'm sorry, 26, 689.39. That is the uh, resistance level. And now if you close above that, would say you're going to make new all-time highs. We could even really extend that new all-time high. Um, we can take a look at where that might take price to. But I don't think we need to do that today. Right now, what we're watching for, by the way, on a pullback out here inside of the Dow, 25,985 is one number to pay attention to. Uh, the next number is going to be 26. Six one and a quarter, but it's really twenty five seven ninety. The bottom of its daily profile out here, but the top of the profile would be support because price is broken above that. So twenty six one twenty six is the number to be watching. I would love to tell you how the market is going to react. I am positioned from a bullish standpoint, but with stops in place. I can't control, nor can you, what the market is going to do. At one fourteen in the afternoon, the market is in bullish conditions. What I don't know is what it will look like at 4 p.m. today. But we'll be right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
the Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien have just announced a special webinar on June 19th for all subscribers to the Taz Profile Scanner. Steve and Tom will break down the trade matrix, market breadth, heat grid, as well as the three-step process you can use with the Taz Profile Scanner to identify market movers and how to capitalize on that move. For all the details and to get started with the Taz Profile Scanner today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. With a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. Go sign up today. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, again, flat markets out here. Nothing off uh, by any significant percentage. The transports are the uh, leader to the downside off a quarter percent, 25 points. That is really no big deal out here. So, uh, you know, we spent the first uh, the first uh, segment of the show really taking a look at uh, both the bullish and the bearish side of the uh, market. Um, I think that's the only thing we can do. There's no real tells uh, that I can find out here. We know that resistance was hit in the Dow and the S&P 500. That's not the case inside the NDX 100 as an example. So if we take a look at the NDX 100, here's what we know right now. Uh, it's made a retracement, a 0.786 retracement from the high back on April 25th to the low that was put in on June the uh, 3rd. Now, the 0.786 retracement, I read Fibonacci not to reach trace level. Each of these levels can be areas where you begin to see a turn. 0.382. Well, we know that wasn't it. Price hit that level, by the way, back on June 6th. The very next day, price gaps up. Widest ranging bar says I'm going to go to the 0.618. It does that. It closes right on it. On June the 10th, price just covers in that area where yesterday it made it up to the next floor. So here's what we do know. If the NDX 100 uh, responds positively to whatever the Fed announcement is, where is it going to go? It's going to go up to its next level or what Tom refers to and we all now refer to, we just have to pay him a royalty for it, is that 100% move of a move. And that would be at the 7851 area. So you've got, when we took a look at that first segment, we've got a test of the uh, swing points of 
uh, for May inside the S&P and the Dow. They were rejected. We've got the NDX at the 0.786 retracement. You can make the case that this will go or can go either way out there. If you take a look at the Russell 2000, trading down to 1548 right now. It made it yesterday, and this is the daily chart we're looking at. And again, its retracement is from the 5-6, May 6th high, down to the low out here. It was either June 3rd or May 31st out there. And you can see that yesterday's move went on to floor number two, the point. 0.618 retracement. So where is price going to head to to the upside if, in fact, that's how the market responds? Very simple. You can expect 1584.58, the 0.786 retracement level out there. Now, the interesting thing about the Russell 2000 is what? Um, oh, I don't have the weekly. But I do have the weekly... I do have the weekly equity futures contract. So let me just put that up here. And if we take a look at this, what, what occurred... This week, Monday and Tuesday, from a weekly perspective, um, if the counter trend rally were to stop, it should have stopped at 1534.30. Now it's Tuesday or is it Wednesday? Today's Wednesday. Did I call the terrific Tuesday? I think it's Wednesday. Eh, sorry, my days are all kind of uh, scattered here. Scattered brain. Uh, I think it's, is it, what is it? Yeah, it's Wednesday, June 19th. Okay. Um, but this is a weekly time frame chart that we're looking at. And so it's really going to be about Friday, not about what it looks like on Wednesday. You see what I mean? So if you bullish conditions, so the, now what we've done is we've, we have switched gears to the intermediate term time frame. And you can see when, uh, from a weekly perspective here, we take a look at the Russell 2000. Just We're just chart patterns. This is not rocket science. Uh, maybe it, the development of the tool included some rocket science. But once you have that done, it's not rocket science to read what the message of the markets is. We can see from the high back in September of 2018, any counter trend rally, the biggest counter trend rally took place in December, December 7, when price got up, tested that red line and rejected it and continued to move lower out there. Now, this is not going to be a timing tool uh, that's going to identify the top or the bottom, but it is going to be a tool to let you know when the market has shifted or the difference between a counter trend rally and a real rally. There's no doubt about that one. There is no doubt about that. You can see that when price here on a weekly basis, January 18th, uh, got above Stevie's red line, and there was a couple of pullbacks to test that level. Uh, there was a, uh, by the way, there was a TD setup nine count pattern that did identify the top from the week of March 1st, 2019. But all, all and, and when you see a top, what it really means, or what Stevie will suggest to you that it really means is that price is just going to go back and test support. Now, if it breaks support, then you've got a change in trend out here. And one level of support and the reason why we affectionately refer to this as Stevie's red line and green line out there is because it is such a key tool. Is it a moving average? Absolutely, positively not. So you can't emulate this tool by using some moving average. It just won't work out there. But you can see here, price did come back March 22nd. It tested it again on March 29th. And boom, that was the message intermediate term that the market was still bullish. So right now, as we speak at 123 in the afternoon on Wednesday, I got the date right, March the 19th, it's in bullish setup territory. But you and I are not going to ignore the weekly chart. We're just going to pay more attention to it come the end of the week. So what does that mean? We closed on Friday below 1534.20. This was just a counter trend rally in the Russell 2000. And price very well may go back and test the TD support line. And that price point out here is 1375.80. 1375.80. So that's the downside piece of it. But again, it's a weekly chart, and so we won't really know whether. And that was the equity futures contract, by the way. And look, we have the same conditions um, in the other equity futures contract. If we take a look at the Dow, though, you did get a close above Stevie's green line for the last couple of weeks. So that is bullish out there when you take a look at the Dow equity futures contract. But 26.117 is the weekly number. Stevie's green line, that's the level to be watching. Price must stay above that level on a closing basis come Friday in order to suggest that the market continues to be bullish and wants to move higher. If you take a look at the NQ, very similar to the Russell 2000. Right now it's trading above the weekly 75.57, Stevie's green line level out here. And, uh, but if price closes below that, well, what it opens up the door for 
is 65.75. That's where the breakout began on a daily basis. Oh, I'm sorry, on a weekly basis inside of the NQ out there. With regard to the ES Mini, and we take a look at its weekly time frame. We take a look at the weekly time frame. Uh, Price close above Stevie's green line for the last two weeks, and now including this third week out here, that's a signal that price wants to head back to its all-time high. So the question is, who's telling us the truth? Is it the Dow and the ES Mini, or is it the NDX and the Russell 2000? And I wish I knew the answer to that question. I don't. I don't. A question that's coming in, any reason to think an intermediate term S&P decline sets in bottom near uh, due come January um, as I see it? So a great question that was asked. And my take on that, I've got to open up this chart here and uh, see how quickly I can do this. I think I could do it relatively quickly. And that question was from John in the Tiger's Den. So John, the answer to your question, I would, what the heck? Oh, there we go, okay, great. So now you've got it. So John's referring to um, Marty Armstrong's economic confidence model uh, timing uh, arrays out here in and that ECM uh, that ECM cycle date which may or may not quite frankly have something to do with the stock market may or may not uh, suggest that there would be a, uh, a key cycle low in January well there's no doubt about that we could have told you that over the last 86 years there's always a cycle low at the end of January that's what this chart is telling us we'll be right back I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as a number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com.
This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So before we uh, were going into that break, we we're taking a look at the 86-year seasonal cycle for the Dow. If I was going to identify key date, uh, and when I use the word date, I'm not really referring to an exact date out here. I'm using a general time frame. Uh, those dates would be the end of January. On my chart, it shows January 30th. Typically, the market, the Santa Claus rally, so to speak, which, by the way, begins in October. Uh, at least that's the best time for the rally, typically in mid-October out there. But what you're really looking for is some type of pattern to occur uh, at or near uh, these uh, date ranges out there. So I'd be using the end of January. I would be using the middle of May. I would be using the uh, end of June, middle of June. I would be using the middle to end of July. And then I would be using the uh, mid-October time frame out there. So uh, we're in this. And if you're watching us on Tiger TV, we're within, we're in this real consolidation-ish type of zone that is out here. So, um, do I think that we're at the stage where, we're, in essence, we've made it to the third week in July, and that the market's just going to move down through October? No, or the market's going to move down through January? No, I don't see that just yet. Instead, what we know is that the Dow, and here I've got the Dow Equity Futures contract. We're trading within a consolidation band. Um, we 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 have done this before. Markets do this. This market will resolve this consolidation band to the upside, as it did in 2015. Um, we're up near the top of that consolidation. Uh, even moving above the high from January uh, won't exactly float my skirt up. You'd have to, and I'm just drawing a trend line, a simple trend line from the January 2018 to the uh, October 2018 uh, level, and I would need to see price close above that. The Dow Equity Futures contract. It's about 20. 7,300 uh, out there that you need to see a close above to say, well, okay, maybe there's something else that's going on in the marketplace. Uh, otherwise, we're just in this consolidation pattern, which means price could easily at some point in time pull back into the 23,207-ish range, even below that, because we can use a simple trend line from the August 2015 low and just simply go ahead and as a uh, touch point, uh, use December of 2018 out here. And so price could easily pull back into that area. Area. So, as we said yesterday, we're closer to a top versus a breakout, uh, in my opinion, and we just need to be on a top patrol out here. Unfortunately, we don't have the patterns associated with a top at this stage, and uh, at least on the daily time frame charts. I've got some on some intraday time frames, but we really need some type of confirmation uh, from the daily time frame. So, John, I hope that at least uh, helps you out with regard to my thinking as I take a look at the uh, charts and chart formations out there. You also pinged me about taking a look at uh, gold, and uh, you and I have discussed this, and in since you were showing basically this chart here or a version of it. And uh, this is the, we looked at this folks yesterday. And the question is, what is gold doing now? This is a monthly time frame chart for gold. And with this horizontal and dashed yellow lines at the 1362 to 1392 level, what they show you is a significant resistance going back for the last nearly six years out here. Is price going to bust through at this time? I don't know. I don't think so, but I don't know if it does break above it and stays above it. And what I mean by that is typically you break above resistance, you come back, test or reject it, and then you're off to the upside. And then you could use a uh, consolidating measured move type pattern. There'd be a number of different ways for us to go ahead and, and uh, do that. But at this stage here, we know that resistance is nearby. Now, unlike the equity futures markets on a daily basis, the gold contract has generated a potential topping signal. So today's action, John, will really be key and everybody else that's out there. What do I mean? Well, look, we had price moving higher doing less relative energy. You can see that out here on this uh, trading day of uh, June the, uh, I believe it's June the 14th. I, I've had several people write in and say, Steve, wasn't that a shooting star? So let me set this record straight. No, it is not a shooting star. 
you really do, if you're using Japanese candlesticks to help interpret what the market is doing, you really want to make sure that you know your candlesticks. Uh, in this case here, it was too large of a wick too large of a wick at the bottom. That is not what a shooting star looks like. Instead, and we, you'll find shooting stars out here, and much like a hammer, instead what you're going to see is very little wick at the bottom, if any. But you can see a small amount. But that is just simply too much wick. This candle means absolutely nothing. Nothing. Zero. Nada. From an interpretation of a Japanese candlestick standpoint. However, as we've seen price trade out here, you can see that yesterday was a bull sash candle. By the way, a bull sash candle does not need to be uh, is, is non-directional. So it doesn't matter. It, it, a shooting star can only occur if the market's moving higher, and a hammer only if the market is moving lower. A bull sash and a bear sash, that is not the case. They're not directionally specific out here. Nonetheless, they are either bullish or bearish candles out here. So what's really interesting about this potential pattern, it's only a potential pattern. This is like the weatherman saying it may rain out here. So Stevie's saying it may rain. Now, I would not have told you that on the trading day of June 7th, because at that stage, price closed above uh, Stevie's, or not mine, but the TD set up a resistance line out there and said that it was bullish and price is going to move higher. Well, it did that. We also know we've got this evening star formation, this Three River evening star formation way back in February. And price has not closed over that. So that's also a key resistance level. Now, if today we get a the way the, the price of gold reacts out here, if we get some type of bearish reversal signal and you see a close below Stevie's green line, which is 1340.90 out here, oddly enough, um, uh, then you get a message that gold is going to go ahead and pull back. And it's made a top, which comes back to this chart that says, hey, gold could easily pull back to that trend line. That trend line, by the way, is coming off of the December 15th, it's a monthly chart, low, and the next tags, the August 2018 area. And that price point would be somewhere in the 1204 level. Now, look, before it gets down there, am I making a projection it's going to hit 1204? No, but I'm saying that that's where price could easily easily pull back to in gold, we must remember that gold is basically virtually, to a certain extent, been trading sideways for nearly six years out there. And what is it that makes anyone think that conditions have changed? Because they haven't. They can't change. They can't change until they do close above this resistance area between 1362 and 1392. If we take a look at, is there any tell in the marketplace with regard to gold? There really isn't. It's trading lower in euros in terms of yen, in terms of pounds, but no levels of, no, no real bearish reversals other than in pounds uh, exist as we speak right now. Uh, gold does have support at the top of its daily profile, 1345. So if you get a close below that, plus Stevie's 1340, huge signal out there to you. Uh, that would say price is going to pull back to 1330 to 1323. That happens to be the bottom and center of the box out there. And then below that, then you can start exploring the uh, larger, longer term trend lines out there as to where price might head to. So that's what I see when I take a look at uh, Goldilocks, the daily, the uh, monthly chart out there. Um, with regard to bonds, the same kind of thing out here. If you take a look at bonds, uh, we'll take a look at this, I suppose, when we get back from this break. I'll get rid of this butterfly sell pattern because that's not the one we're watching today. We're watching one of those same thing like in gold, the Rhodes Momentum topping indicator, which right now you've got a confirmation. But I don't care what it says at 138. I want to know what it says when the market closes today. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. 
That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Yeah, folks, there's still flat markets. Uh, let's go to our first question. This comes in from Jeff C. Jeff writes in and says, hey, Steve, love the show. Um, I've been listening to, to you. Blah, 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 blah. But here's the question. He says, don't you think that um, yesterday's confirmed A to B equals CD up pattern inside the uh, spies and the Qs was the, uh, was the signal? as to how the market's going to respond to the Fed. So it's a great question out there. Um, and what uh, what Jeff is referring to, if we take a look at, uh, but first, Jeff, I'm going to tell you that uh, I do not see an A to B equals CD to the upside. So uh, this is, the, now this is, the A to B equals CD pattern is uh, somewhat subjective out here. The A point, the B point, the C point, those are fairly easy to discriminate. But here's what I mean, and I'll show it to you because you'll see it from a percentage standpoint. So the A point on here, I think that you are referring to, would be the low from June 3rd. The B point would be the high from June 11th. And the retracement, the only retracement, the lowest low after that candle session, Jeff, would be the trading day of June 12th. And if you take a look at the retracement there, you'll see it. It's the exact retracement on my system. It's 19.58%. So for me, for my work, for the A to B equals CD, I need to see at least a 0.382 retracement or something at least very close to a 0.382 retracement. Not 50% of that number or something like that. This is 19%. It's a little bit more than 50%. But that, so to me, that's not enough of retracement to go ahead and say that uh, oh, it's automatic, that the uh, spies are going to go ahead up to, and complete the A to B equals CD and get up to 306. If this is the retracement, which it could be, Jeff, so I could be wrong here. I'm just saying for my work and the way I do A to B equals CDs, this doesn't qualify. 
Because if it did qualify, it's not 306 price where it's price set it to. It's set to 30, 311 or 317 out there. That would be 3100 or you know 3170 out there, give or take. Um, so I don't see that. What I do see, and, and we go look at the Qs too for you. What we do see is we do see that price certainly is trading into a swing point. That was the May 1st swing point, which had 71 million shares yesterday with 85 million shares. All that that means in a closed inside there is that price should go test the top of that. But remember, when we put up the cash indice, it trades different than the ETF because of distributions, dividends. But what we had yesterday was this in the SPX, and that is the testing of the swing point. That was at 29.23 and a rejection of that. What well, that means is that price should at least get back up and test 29.23.36. Not that it will go up and test the 29.54 level out there. If we look at the Qs, I assume we're going to see the same thing out here. Uh, but let's go make sure of that. So let's take like, the A point. Very easy to identify. I would assume, uh, Jeff, you were using that June 3rd low. And for the B point, you would use the high on June 11th. But the lowest low that took place out here, let me see, was it June 12th? 182? No, it was 181.94 on June 14th. So what percentage retracement there? 21.45. Again, I'm looking for 0.382. You need some, you know, the retracement. Here's here's a uh, here's a more valid A to B equals CD, at least from Stevie's work and uh, the years worth of uh, work on this. So your A point out here, this is to the downside. This is coming back to it looks like April 29th. This is in the Qs. 191.32 is at the high. Well, we got it twice out here. Uh, and that's so I'm going to use the trading day of May 1st. So it's my A point, my B point, May 13th, and my C point out here, May 16th. There you get a 60% retracement. That's the type of retracement that really would set up that A to B equals CD pattern. Something less than a point three eight two, uh, Jeff, it's just simply suspect. And that's, uh, that's how Stevie trades the A to B equals CD pattern out there. So thanks for the question. I hope that helps you out. No other questions. Very quiet out there, very much like the market. So I would say the emotion of the listeners is very much like the market. So let's spend some time taking a look at what? Uh, taking a look at uh, some individual stocks. Let's go see what's moving to the downside, see what issues there are out here. So let's go start with AZO, AutoZone. AutoZone is down uh, about uh, $15 and change, 1.4% out here. Let's go put it on our three different time frames, see where price is trading in relation to those market profiles. I think there's going to be a market profile workshop this evening, which I would recommend that everybody go to. Um, the price uh, inside of AutoZone above the daily, weekly, and monthly, and quarterly top of those profiles. So that looks pretty good. Um, you're trading out at 1110. Is that right? Didn't realize that uh, AutoZone was an $1,100 instrument. No kidding. Holy shnikes out here. Wowzer. Okay, well, it is. Um, so if we take a look at uh, AutoZone. Um, here's what it's doing right now. It's pulling back and testing Stevie's red line. Your price is 1109, about 1111 is Stevie's red line. So close below that would say that AutoZone could pull back to its breakout level. That took place on June the 4th. That number is 1031.39 out there. Price is moving higher, doing less relative energy. So the pullback inside AutoZone should come back to the 1064 uh, to the 1031 level. That's what I see as we look at it. What else is moving and grooving to the downside? You got O'Reilly Automotive. Uh, do we need to look at another automotive no we don't but google let's go see what's going on with uh, google maybe there's some kind of tell there g double o g out here see what it's doing it's trading right now at 1096 it's trading above its daily uh, it's traded into and so far has rejected the top of its monthly profile and is below the weekly. So we got a mixed message out here with regard to the uh, Googler. However, what's not mixed is the TD setup nine count, the potential nine count. Now, this will confirm a nine count if Google today closes above 1088.77, your 1096. Then you'll get a nine count. That's a topping signal. And that would say, okay, Google should at least come back to support. Remember, our first level of support in this case here is going to go ahead and be Stevie's red line, 1073. 
Because that line is red, it tells us that we have a price oscillator that is below zero. If price closes below 1073.11, then we have a falling price oscillator below zero. And as Stevie likes to say, nothing more bearish than a failed bullish pattern out here. And closing, but it's bullish, even though it has a topping signal. But if you break through support, it could be sayonara, baby, out there. So you've got the TD setup nine count. Be careful if you are inside of the googly one that is out there. Um, maybe let's do this here. Instead of looking at individual stocks, why don't we go look at the sectors inside the S&P 500? That sounds like a good idea, doesn't it? Because what are the sectors inside the S&P 500 communicating to you and I as we speak right now at 149 in the afternoon? Let's start with the number one weighted sector. Of course, that would be the XLK. Any type of bearish pattern or signal out here? And the answer is no, there isn't. It's got resistance up here. There's your TD set up a trend line. That's up at the 78.36 area. So watch that. If price is close above that, uh, the XLK going back to its highs. Uh, below 76.09, a further retracement, that would be Stevie's green line. But are we seeing a topping condition out here? We see resistance. We see this little shooting star. There's what your shooting star looks like out here. No wick to the downside. You can have a small wick, you just can't have a big lower shadow or wick as they refer to them. So, yeah, there's resistance just been trading sideways, but it has not broken through support. That is the XLK. How about the health sector out here before we go to this hard break? Healthcare sector looks mighty fine to me. There's not anything bearish about XLV. I believe that's number two waiting inside the S&P 500. I'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. 
This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Let's go to Ron in Denver. Ron, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Hello, Steve. Thanks for taking the call. <clears throat> I just had a question. A couple of days ago, I bought a few puts on GDOT, Green Dot. Yeah. I bought 50 puts, and they expire Friday. So I'm just looking for a short term. And I, yeah. I was thinking I was thinking this yeah. thing might be able to get to 40, to 46. I just wondered what your thoughts were. So and then 46, also I would, yeah, wanted 46. to ask about Beyond Meat. When, when would be a good time to look at it for a put? Okay, so let's take a look at Green Dot first. GDOT, folks, is a ticker symbol. And, uh, Ron, the, the best way that I can answer that question is price is nearing support. Now, support here, based on its daily market profiles, would be 46.51 to 46.96. You're trading at 47.42. You've been down to a low 47.21 today. You may have gotten the meat off of this bone out of this. Now, this is a bullish structured box. Doesn't guarantee you that support will hold, but uh, it does does tell you that you've got buyers lined up inside of Green Dot between 46.51 and 46.96 out there. If it closes below that, 46.51, well, then you're likely to go test that high volume low from May the 9th, 41.67. So those are the parameters that you're dealing with out there. Uh, you're trading right down towards a, a real key level of support out there. With regard to Beyond Meat out there, BYND, I believe, is the uh, ticker symbol out here there's such a lack of trading information in other words it's only been trading since may 2nd my tools just aren't going to do us a whole lot of good. The only thing that I can say when we take a look at Beyond Meat out here is prices stretch. It's moving higher, doing less relative energy out there, but uh, we don't have a bearish reversal signal. If we take a look at our wave count from the very opening day of trading, you're in wave number six. That's letter F. Maybe at wave number seven, Ron. That means it's got to take out yesterday's high. Maybe that's a place to consider Beyond Meat. So uh, uh, good to talk to you. Sorry we've got to run because it's the end of the show. Uh, best of luck Thank with you, you in those uh, trades. You, Folks, stay tuned. David White's up next. He's going to update us on exactly what the Fed has done and what the markets are doing. Take care.